Hello, everybody, wherever you may be from coast to coast and sea to shine and sea. Welcome back to Ham Radio Live. Today, a very special show, how to build your own phased vertical array antennas with William D. Jardines, Whiskey One, Zulu Yankee. If you're strung out on love, be hopeful. It will all come together in time because the withdrawal from love is pain. I tried battle scars to keep too high But I know a better way and you can start today Talk to me brothers and sisters from 10,000 miles away Come to me with your problems, I'll hear what you say Song is called Human Race it's done, uh, it's a great song, done by the well-bred mongrels. You'll find this on Bandcamp, it's volume one, and uh, the song's called Human Race. Great song about ham radio. Bill chose this, so here we go, listen. I'm talking global free, worldwide, transoceanic and stateside. We bounce off satellites, spread the word, and it's totally free, in case you haven't heard. Get in tune, get on board, what are you waiting for? Join the cause, we bounce off satellites, spread the word, and it's totally free, in case you haven't heard. Today. It's a Saturday. Welcome to Ham Radio Live Sunday in Australia in the East. Welcome very much. We're grateful you're here. We're going to learn how to build phased array verticals today with William D. Jardines. It's <laughs> a good song. This is not found on many places, but if you do want to find it and download it, you can find it on Bandcamp. Again, the name of the song is called Human Race. It's on album volume one. There you go. Talk to me, brothers and sisters from 10,000 miles away. Come to me with your problems, I'll hear what you say. So this is Whiskey One. Sulu Yankee sending 73s, no need to thank me. Just spread the gospel that we're talking about. It's Love and justice that the human race is about Talk to me, talk to me huh? <laughs> From the four winds of the world, wherever you may be, away we go Hello everybody, welcome back to Shack in Oregon My name is Larry, my call sign in Hammer Dose Kilo 7 Hotel November This show is going to help you tremendously to build phased array vertical antennas Now you might be asking what those are Imagine two vertical antennas that are spaced a specific amount apart, specific distance, right? And you have the right phasing line between them. So one just a little behind the other, right? So you're going to be able to not only transmit, but also hear better in the direction that the front antenna is pointed. It's a phenomenal thing. If you, if you have them switch with the phase, right, you can switch them. For example, let's say one's going north, one's going south, right? You can hit a switch, and all of a sudden, you're not working the north anymore. Now you're working the south. We have a brilliant guide today. William Desjardins, call sign, Whiskey One Zulu Yankee, going to show us how to do it. Before that happens, I'd like to include all of you that might be interested in getting your ham radio license to please contact someone like the American Radio Relay League at www.arrl.org. Hit the contact us bar. They'll find a ham radio club close to you, and then you contact the club. They'll find a good club for you, and then you get to know them. They'll help you pass your test, and then you learn ham radio. www.arrl.org. RRL.org. William Desjardins, glad to have him today. Here's a little bit of his work, and you can hear about the value, true value, of a directional antenna like this. Now, we're talking simply, you know, taking a signal and, and literally working it directionally. No joke. This is on 40 meters. It's over 10,000 miles away. Now, for people metric, 16,000 kilometers. Check this out. Station, uh, if you're still there, this is Victor Kilo 3, Sierra, Sierra. Over. 
Roger, uh, Victor Kilo, three, sugar, sugar from W1, uh, Zulu, Yankee, Paul, over. Oh, Roger, um, Whiskey One, Zulu, Yankee. Yeah, thank you uh, for, for your patience and um, a yeah, very good morning to you. Good evening from Eastern Victoria. Uh, you're um, about five, eight to nine to me here. I'll just double check that on the next over. Um, but uh, terrific signal. Q5 band is uh, it's a little bit of uh, QI Mexico. But the band is otherwise quiet here and um, yeah, it's just a good, good signal. Uh, W1ZY, VK3 SS. Uh, Paul, over. Okay, Paul, uh, VK3SS, W1 said, why, uh, good evening from uh, Rhode Island. Uh, you're about to 10 to 15 dB over S9, just a beautiful signal coming through. You got the name correct. And uh, just a beautiful uh, beautiful copy on you uh, uh, this morning uh, over here where, where the sun is just coming up, uh, Paul. Terrific signal. Uh, VK3SS, W1 said, why. Oh, Roger, and, and sorry, what, what is your name again, please, over? I'm sorry, the name is Bill. Bravo, India, Lima, Lima. Roger, Bill, and uh, great to be saying hello to you on Rhode Island. I think we have worked before. Um, and, uh, yeah, you're uh, coming in here really well, 5-9 uh, to me here, just into uh, this uh, humble um, inverted V, um, albeit a, a, a long one. Um, what antenna are you running there, Bill? Uh, I'm using 500 watts and... Um, and uh, an old uh, ICOM 751A uh, with the IC2KL small solid state amp. Um, I'm having a bit of trouble with my other rig and amplifier at the moment, which is uh, which is a bit of a conundrum. Um, W1ZY, VK3SS. VK3SS, W1ZY, beautiful, Paul. Again, beautiful signal. I'm making a uh, audio recording, and I'll send you a, uh, a copy of it uh, if you want. It's just incredible. Um, I'm running here a pair of phased verticals, homemade, elevated uh, four feet, uh, four meters above the, three meters above the ground, and I have about 30 uh, elevated radials per vertical. It's beaming west, and I'm listening on a beverage, running about a kilowatt to Paul. VK3SS, W1 said why. Oh, Roger, uh, uh, all okay, and Bill, and very interesting indeed. Yeah, those uh, phased verticals are uh, working extremely well. Uh, how long are the radials, please, Bill, uh, over? Uh, they're uh, one quarter wavelength, about 35, 36 feet, uh, 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 Paul, over. Uh, QSL, okay, um, uh, fine business and, and uh, very interesting. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd like to um, uh, muck around and get some verticals uh, happening as well. I've got an old Moonraker Marine Band HF uh, antenna, uh, which uh, I'm not sure what frequencies it was originally designed for, but um, I reckon um, with a bit of persuasion it could be uh, made to work on uh, the amateur bands here with a with a, even with a tuner or something. But um, yeah, the uh, phase verticals. Congratulations on them, and all okay on the uh, the beverage antenna for receive. Uh, and the 1KW, yeah, good set up, Bill, um, uh, well done indeed. And, um, uh, I, um, uh, I've got a, a project, a three-element monobanda for this band, uh, that I'm building, but I'm not sure when I'm going to get it completed and up in the air. Uh, All right, so we'll stop it right there because this is really important for you to understand. He is in Rhode Island, okay, Rhode Island, North, you know, New England, right? So he's up in the northeastern part of the U.S. He's working about as far as you can work in one direction. Literally, he's almost as far one way as the other way. He's working to southeast Australia, right? And he's doing it with a pair of vertical antennas. We're going to find out more how to do that. Before we go, I do want to welcome some folks just quickly to say this, and it's an important day as well. Color Me OD was very first in the show. Welcome, mate. Good to see you today. Thanks for coming. You're first in. Thanks. My brother, Bob. And today is Bob's 69th birthday. Bob, here you go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <clears throat> Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. There you go. <laughs> happy birthday, Bob. You know, the neat story, he was given uh, 
40% chance to live five years in 2011. By the grace of God, he's still here. Bob, I'm grateful to be your brother and a happy birthday to you. Tom in Bahrain is here. Alpha 9 2 Golf Whiskey. Cheers, mate. Cliff Bolts in Virginia. Whiskey Delta 4. Oscar Bravo Pop is here. Colin from the UK is here. Hi, Colin. Mike Mike Zero. Oscar Pop X-Ray. Gary Strong from Las Vegas. Whiskey 9. Papa Papa Yankee. Sean is here. Alpha India 7. Echo Quebec from Oregon. Welcome. William Myers for the state of Wisconsin. Kilo Alpha 8. Golf India. Mike, welcome. Ocala, Florida is here. Hi, Adam. November Yankee 5. Echo. Jim from Walnut Creek, California. Whiskey 6. Juliet India. Mike. Andy New from Wales. Missed his call sign. Mike 7. Charlie Union November. Gunter from Germany is here. Hi, Gunter. DK5ONV. Thor joins us from Minnesota. Kilo Zero Tango, Juliet Tango. And we have another big, very good guest. We're grateful to have him. Dick, Scotland, and Mike. Mike is here from Jacksonville, Florida. All of you guys, welcome. Welcome to the show. If you have a question, please put them in the comment section. This is a huge show. If you really want, if you want to do this, not only can you do it portable, you can do it at your house. This is going to be explained in an understandable manner by a man who's put a lot of effort in this. If you haven't pre-read his article, I'll put it in the description section of this video so you can get you know, get yourself all up to date and know more about phased vertical antennas, right? Before we do that, I do want to say a quick hello. That's content number four, Glenn Stevenson from Australia. Welcome, mate. Good to see you, mate. Good day. Good day, mate, from Australia. Let's meet him now. Whiskey One Zulu Yankee. This is what his QRZ page looks like. Yep, that's some marshland, and those are two verticals. And this is Mr. William D. Jardines. Welcome to the show, my friend. Hello, how are you, Larry? It's great to have you. How's the weather in Rhode Island doing? Uh, it's nippy. It's about 22 degrees, but it's nice and sunny. So at least we have the sun today. There you go. Very good. Folks, if you have questions for, for Mr. DeJardins, please put them in the comment section. He's going to be able to answer questions about phased array vertical antennas, building your own, all right, as well as people who may want to build a beverage antenna. He does that too. You could tell from that video that he had with VK. And by the way, that was southeastern Australia. That's farther to go from, from Rhode Island. It's not like he's hitting Perth on the west coast of Australia. You know, he's going all the way southeast. So if you have a question, please put it in the comment section. Bill, what, what do you think uh, is the most important part for people to understand when we're talking about building phased verticals? Um, well, they have to be identical. The two verticals must be uh, constructed uh, in the same manner because you're asking the two of them to dance with each other. You're going to phase them. So they both have to be identical. You can't have an aluminum pole for one and then a piece of wire for the other. You've got to take a lot of efforts to try to make them both uh, exactly identical mechanically. And then electrically, you have to resonate them as well. But mechanically, to start off, use the same type of vertical. Okay. Okay. And a question coming from the UK. This is from Colin. Mike Mike Zero, Oscar Pop X-Ray. Have you ever tried an eighth wave spaced vertical fed at 135 degrees? Hi, Colin. No, I haven't. But I know you can do that. Uh, if you adjust the phasing, you can adjust the spacing. You can go all the way out to a half a wavelength, which people do. It has a different phasing, but you can bring them closer and closer and adjust the phasing to get some directivity out of it. The, the pattern changes, but you can phase two verticals closer than a quarter wavelength. Okay, very good. Go. Again, questions, please. Put them in the comments section for William Desjardins, Whiskey 1, Zulu Yankee. Jeff Kulinek, welcome. Kilo Delta 9, Romeo Yankee Tango. Thanks for coming. Happy Saturday to you. What? Okay, so essentially you got two vertical antennas, identical in height, right? One has yep. to be behind the other a little bit, so there's got to be a phasing line. That's why we call them phase verticals. How do you compute, for example, 40 meters? You want to build a set of phase verticals. How would you go about doing that? Uh, well, the easiest way, the direct answer to that is that there's, I think it's VA7ST, Victor Alpha 7 Sugar Tango, has a, um, has a calculator online where you can type in what frequency you want and push a button and it will spit out the correct uh, uh, Christman phasing lines, which is what everyone's using. Mm -hmm. So it takes, it takes all the calculations out of it. Okay, very good. Dick Scotland asks you, do you use elevated or ground radials? I use elevated. I get the verticals away from the ground to reduce my ground losses, which is extremely important. Uh, uh, inland, I, I raise them above the ground about 12 feet 
Okay, and and here is a photo, a little bit of what here where we go. This is pre-bus two, that shows a good illustration of his radials coming out. Okay, and you can tell that they're all you know coming outward and they're elevated. Do you do you typically connect all of these through like trees, or do you use uh, maybe stakes or something large built to be able to you know have kind of an end to them, if that makes sense, right? you got to go from the antenna to something. Where does it go? Where, does the, where do the ends go? Well, if you, uh, Larry, if you read in the general literature, everyone says uh, on a vertical, you want a nice symmetrical radial field. So when you elevate it, you have to take an effort to go around to all the trees around the antenna, both face verticals, and uh, put up a, I used a mason line, tacking it to trees. So you have some kind of a catenary line going around the entire antenna system so that you can run out individual uh, counterpoise wires to there to where you want to tie them off, even though there's not a tree there. You tie it off onto the mason line. They really need to be perpendicular to the vertical and then symmetrically distributed. Okay, so you don't want them sloping. You want them perfectly perpendicular. You can slope them. You're going to raise a feed point impedance, but when you imagine looking down on the antenna, when you slope them, you reduce the, um, you reduce the radial field because it's sloping down. It won't be as wide. Uh, uh, and remember, a... Counterpoise system elevated is a is a tuned system, and and I have found that it works. Um, uh, it, it, they they behave better together. The two verticals will behave uh, better together if you put it perpendicular and flat, like the spokes of a wagon wheel. Rather okay. Than slope. All right. Can but you the, can, can the, slope them? Can the radials can, like? Can you use the same tree? For example, the front antenna, the back antenna. The the radials are going out from both. Can the antennas, can they get close to each other in terms of where you tie off the radials or do you keep them apart? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, if you can imagine it, uh, you'd have a quarter wave. If you have a, a quarter wave spacing and two quarter wave radials are going to kind of go to the base of yeah. each one. Yeah. So you want to avoid that. You want to have them, you want to skew them off mm -hmm. where they overlap. If it's an elevated system, um, I space them. I used a little PVC spacer so that where they crossed, I elevated. I did not let them cross because they're tuned. Yep. And I read that in a, um, I think it was a footnote about like 1935 uh, engineering book or something. That's some old that? Said, yeah, don't let your uh, counterpoise wires uh, cross over if you're phasing. Yep. That's what I heard. A question from DX Scotland. This is, uh, I believe it's Chris in uh, Scotland. Are the radials quarter wave tuned? Chris, uh, they're, they're essentially start off quarter wave, but one of the uh, tricky things about getting the thing to tune properly, if they're elevated, is a, a playoff between the length of the vertical and the length of the radials. So one of the one of the things that you end up doing is uh, when you're getting them to phase, the the elevated counterpoise kind of all have to be the same length, and it depends upon the ground conditions under it. But you got to customize it, and you you prune them uh, to get a nice balance, and then you do the final resonating by adjusting the vertical heights of the uh, of the verticals to get it to match in. But both radial. The the big deal on that is you have to get balanced currents uh, in the in each counterpoise system, which is difficult to do. And you want to get those radios all the same length uh, when you first start off, and you can tune them. Uh, it's funny that if you uh, uh, um, I forgot to think, Rudy Severance did a paper where where you, when you're using two ele or using an elevated counterpoise system, if you increase the length of the radios like three inches. The vertical, uh, uh, to retune it, the vertical can be like two or like a foot and a half or a foot. In other words, it can really throw it off. So it's basically, it's good to start off with uh, equal size radials uh, and then try to uh, resonate the vertical uh, and then try to make sure the radial fields are all equal on both of them. Okay, so the radial field on, on both front and back antennas equal. You want to make sure that's equal. But then... All the wires, start them off, all the wires equal. And then if you have to tune it, if you want to tune the elevated system... Uh, do you have to do all of them? You have to like, I want to take three inches off. You got to do it to all of them. Take okay. it and wrap the wire around it. But you got to do it to all of them and measure it. With okay. A wire. Okay. And then you mentioned about raising or lowering the, the vertical itself. When, what, where in this process would that come? Let's go through the process. You start okay. by putting two antennas out. And where would you begin from there? So you got your two antennas. You got them on the ground. You're putting them up. How would you start? All right, if we're using an um, elevated system, which is different from a ground-mounted system, you put the verticals up, which is like maybe 10% of the work. Okay, okay. and how high, typically, would you put them? 
you want to get them up um, uh, maybe 12 feet. Good for like, so the deer can get under it, but basically electrically, you'd like to get them up about at least 12 feet. Okay. That's the, the base of the antenna, right? The base of the verticals. Yep. Okay. All right. So you yeah. then you, the antenna is up and are these adjustable whip antennas or are they ham sticks? What do you use? I used um, telescoping uh, aluminum tubing. Okay. Oh, wow. That's very right. Okay. All right. So then you, you get your antennas from there. You've got them up on the poles or posts, whatever you're using. Now what? Now you put uh, four radials out. You start off four. You start off with a few number of radials and try to resonate the uh, vertical. And then you, uh, you play off the length of those radials until you get the vertical to resonate. Okay. Uh, given your situation, because you're going to have a different soil condition, permittivity, mm -hmm. uh, wherever you are. So your location, you're going to have to customize the thing uh, to that because of the ground conditions. Okay. One of the reasons why we lift it up is to get away from the ground so it doesn't matter that much. Uh, but uh, given that fact, you start off and you say, "I'm going to resonate this vertical with this with these four ground with these four elevated counterforce wires." Okay. After that, you're going to add, and it takes a while to add. It's like a whole project to add, and uh, you get uh, it, you get into a routine when you're adding it. As you do so, you will see a, uh, the improvement of the antenna is remarkable, especially okay. when you get especially when you get above the number of radios, Larry, that you have under your vertical, which is only eight. Right. Is that correct? Yep. Eight. Yeah. If you go up to sixteen. If you go up to 16, you're going to you're going to see a huge difference from where you are right now as an aside. As okay. A minimum. Minimum okay. at 16. But basically, um, you resonate it. When you resonate, you do not look for low SWR. You don't look for a dip. On, on the verticals, their free point impedance, when you get it perfect with the radios, is 36 ohms. Okay. So that's, that's going to come out to 1.3 to 1 SWR at the base of the vertical. The way you tune the vertical for resonance is you, you sweep it with your analyzer or whatever, looking for the zero reactance. That's the definition of resonance, not low SWR. Forget SWR. Where the reactants go to zero, that's your resonant point. And if it shows a little bit low, it means the antenna is resonating low, which means it's a little bit too big. So you got to shorten it a little bit. And then uh, if it's too high, then you got to bring it down. You got to lengthen it uh, to get it to resonate against those radials. Okay. And if you find if you find yourself saying, you know what, my my vertical is too short. I can't I can't get it long enough. Uh, to resonate on like 40 meters or 20 meters or whatever you're running, you can then lengthen the radios. You can lengthen the counterpoise wires and say, I'm going to add a little bit more counterpoise so I can resonate against this vertical because it's not quite tall enough. Okay. 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 Very good. All right. So now you've got, you got the first one built. Okay. Now you got to get the second one built and the phasing line. Walk yep. us in. Call in, by the way, in the UK. I'll get your question. But you get the second one now. You have to do the same exact process. Is that what you're doing now the second time? When you first when you first do the first one and you get the four out or the eight out of however many counterpoise wires you're running and you get it running, obviously you're going to go inside. You're going to check it out when you go into your stack. It's a multi-day process. It'll take you at least a week to do it properly. Mm -hmm. You get to play with it. So at least you have something to play with. And then you say, now I'm going to build the second one. And then you, then you go over and I, you know, you get a post hole digger and you get like a four by four or a two by four. You stick it into some cement, pour some water into it. To have the base for the vertical, yeah. And then you start, then you start building the other one, and you have to measure it for one quarter wavelength um, using a tape measure. You can calculate it in free space. There's no velocity factor. Then you build the second one, and then you lay out its uh, its counterpoise wires. F begin with four, and then build it up to eight. Build the other one up to eight. Try to resonate both of those antennas, um, uh, and then you get to the phasing part. Okay, no, just one second. Let's stop for a second. Okay, okay. so the distance between the two. Quarter wavelength for that frequency, right? Yep. Okay, there we go. So the first post hole, say you're using a you know piece of concrete, you're going to put it in the ground, you're going to you know put up a maybe a 10 or 12 foot pole, and then you've got your antenna that goes on top. Then a quarter wavelength for that frequency you want to work away from there and the direction you want to work, you, dill, you build another hole. You dig another hole with concrete, put the post hole in, let it set, and then you've got your second place to put an antenna up. All right, so now you have both post holes. You've got your radial, so you have eight, okay? Next, you've got to build some sort of a phasing system so they'll work properly. What do you do? Uh, you uh, Basically, you go up to VA7SK's website to his online calculator, and you punch in um, how long your 71-degree lines have to be, or your 71-degree phasing line, and then there's two 84-degree, um, we'll call them transmission lines, and it goes to a relay a remote relay box that you're going to build or buy 
build it better. Uh, uh, out of the <laughs> yes, yes, agreed. Unless you want to spend a lot of money, you can that's build right. A it's a relay for Christ. Like you can use a car relay, <laughs> an automotive relay. That's right, electromechanical Perfect. relay. Yeah, yeah. Put it in a box. So. And- now, what's the website again? Sorry, the, the call sign, was it Victor Alpha 7 Sierra Echo? Is that it? Sierra Tango, I think. Tango, okay. Victor Alpha 7 Sierra Tango is where you'll find the information on this. What's better? Is it better to go 71 degrees, or would you be better maybe, does it depend? Would you, would you, oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, so what, what would you recommend, or just play around with it? Uh, well, basically, you, you the, the the Chrisman method it's called that people are using. Right. Um. Uh, you you need to have a seventy one degree phasing line. It's a time delay line. Uh, one cable is seventy one degrees, and then you have two cables coming off of the relay, uh, to the, both feed points, and that's eighty four degrees long. Eighty four out of a full wavelength of the of the um, of the frequency. Right. So there's two eighty four degree lines that run to the base of the vertical. And then you're going to, the relay is going to switch in that extra 71 degree phasing line into either of those two um, uh, antenna runs, so either vertical. That's how you get the phasing into the verticals. All right, and you use the um, you use the Victor Alpha Seven Sierra Tango calculator to to do all that. To calculate, or oh, you can do it. You don't need to. I mean, if you want to do the math, it's uh, a one wavelength. Uh, if you measure the wavelength of a frequency in free space, it's going to be 360 degrees because it's 360 degrees of a single sine wave. Right. So then you say, okay. well, I need I need 71 degrees of that. Uh, so you say it's you know 71 out of 360 degrees is how much how much of that of that signal you're going to be using. That's what the the percentage of the wavelength you're going to be going for. Okay. And you can you can do those calculations uh, if you want. I, I do it. I don't use the online calculator, but if you want, you can plug it. You can plug it into his calculator. Yeah, since we got a lot of new folks, I mean, you know that that would probably be the easiest way. So you get your your, your multiple antenna. You got two, and they're a quarter wave apart. They got their their elevated radials. Keep them up. You know that's what Bill suggests. And then you essentially have a relay, and the relay is there so you can switch directions, right? So you can right. say it's north south. You can now work north and then switch and you hit in south. You got your phasing line that goes in and everything works. And then a good question by Neil Hankey is so it becomes purely resistive at 36 ohms. Is that correct? That's correct. That's a radiation resistance. Yep. All right, good. Robert Sabato uh, asks a question here from New Jersey. His call sign, uh, sorry, don't have it here. It's, uh, he's asking is the Comet Charlie Hotel Alpha 250B? Good for a vertical base. I don't know what that is. Yeah, not sure either on that, Robert. I'm not. Yeah, his call sign Kilo Two Whiskey Romeo Delta. Robert, thank you. You know, any sort of adjustable antenna will work. I mean, I'll give you one MFJ 1979 works great. Twenty meters. You know, it'll go thirty. What is it? Sorry, no, seventeen feet. So that'll work your daytime band, but you're gonna have to go longer if you want a forty because it's just it, you need more space out there. So. Uh, call in from the UK, build your own relay box, folks. I built four of them. There you go. All right. Um, let's see. Dick Scotland is the relay box. Sorry. In the relay box, there's a tune circuit or inductor, as I've seen in some 80 meter four square installs online. No, that's for a four square. Uh, that's not for this at all. It's a simple uh, switching of that extra 71 degree line into either of the two uh, 84 degree lines. It's a simple, it's a simple circuit. Okay. Okay. So let's go from the radio. I'd like to try and make this as simple as I can for the viewers here today. All right. So you come from your radio and you, you have a single piece of coaxial cable it goes out to your antenna field, so to speak. All right. Where does the first coax go from your radio? Uh, the other end of it goes into the relay switching box. Okay. Into the relay box. From the relay box, there will be another set of coax cables. What do those coax cables go to? One goes to one vertical, which is 84 degrees. The other one goes to the other vertical, which is 81 degrees. And then you're going to have um, a, a loop of coax that also goes into the box, and that's the 71 degree uh, timing line. Okay. And actually, I, I, as a quick aside, one, uh, uh, the guys with the phase verticals, we talk about degrees. Uh, that's how we describe lengths of things. But if you say it's a quarter wavelength, I would say that's 90 degrees. It's a quarter of the sine wave. It's yeah. 90 degrees. Yeah. So 71 is just a little bit under and 84 is just a little bit under. But that's how we talk uh, in terms of uh, wavelength. Okay. So you mentioned about the box. And, and I so I, I just want to make this clear. So you've got coax. The coax is there to help delay 
one of the antennas, so it's a little behind the other one. That's what it's there for. So you've got your coax going to the relay box. You've got coax going from the relay box to both antennas, but there has to be a delay coax in that, that feed. Is that inside the relay box? Because that, that I don't say you can fit all that. So that's going to have to go outside somewhere. How does that all connect together to kind of wrap it in a bow? Okay. Uh, the best way to do it is you get two T connectors uh, where you have a box. You build a box with a relay in it uh, that will then either send the center conductor to either of the two um, coaxial connectors on the box. Then into each one of the coaxial connectors, you screw in a T connector. And then you, you screw the two antenna, the two wires that go off to the two antennas, you screw into either side of that. And on the other side of the T-connector, you put the phasing cable. That there is the simplest go. way of building that relay box. There you go. And that that's helpful for people. I hope it helps you understand. And, and you know, you can always replay this portion of the video so you can understand exactly how to build piece by piece by piece. Because it does make a huge difference. Tom from Bahrain asked, the 71 degree piece that is switched in, is it straight? Is it a straight piece or coiled? It can be coiled. Okay. Doesn't matter if it's straight or coiled either way. You just basically get the amount off of either calculating it, or you can go to the Victor Alpha 7, Victor Tango. Sorry, is it? No, it's Sierra Tango, right? Yeah, Sierra Tango. Yeah. yeah. All right. So questions, please put them in the comment section for William V. Jardines. His call sign is Whiskey One Zulu Yankee. A brilliant mind from the state of Rhode Island. Very great to hey, have uh Let's, uh, Larry, let's uh, see if we can talk about the theory for like uh, just one minute about what exactly we're trying to do here, how that, how it is that they work. I'm all for that. Go for it. Okay. If you have these two verticals uh, that are standing up, you have to imagine that, that you're either standing on one side of them or the other. Mm -hmm. Imagine you have two frames of reference. Okay. And let's, let's, take, let's take this guy over here. The objective is to get the two antennas so that when you're standing and looking at one, the other one is 180 degrees out of phase from that point of view. Okay. So you have, you have two ways, you have two delays. One is the spatial delay. The spatial delay is 90 degrees because it takes uh, it takes it uh, one quarter of the frequency for the for the energy from one vertical to make it over to the other one. Mm -hmm. Quarter wavelength. Okay. And then you say, um, all right, so now I got that uh, that one's always going to be 90 degrees out of phase with this with this one. And then you say I'm going to retard that the, the one that's 90 degrees out by the time it gets to this vertical, you say, I'm going to, I'm going to retard it by another 90 degrees by putting a little bit extra coaxial cable into its line. So that the radio signal takes a little bit longer to get to that vertical. It's 90 degrees behind. Mm -hmm. And then it takes another 90 degrees for that energy field to make it over to the other vertical. So at that point, they're out of phase. Perfect. This one is, from this one, from this vertical's point of view, this one's 180 degrees out of phase with it. Yep. So as a result, they cancel out. And if you're standing next to it, you'll get no signal. The signal will be really weak. They cancel out. Okay. In the same condition, if you walk over to the other side and not change anything uh, and with the other vertical, it's uh, 90 degrees uh, behind the, uh, the, the the one behind it. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and, and it takes that other one 90 degrees to get over to it. So from that point of view, they're both in phase. Perfect. They're both in phase. And that adds, that adds the uh, directivity. Perfect. Uh, and then you, you gain up about 3 dB. That is, a, I, that's a, um, an, an attempt to explain something very complicated. Yes, uh, yes. And I don't know if everybody got it, but... Um, well, no, uh, I mean, what, what's, what's good about this and what's good about YouTube is you can replay it. Okay. And then just listen again and say, okay, I'm not quite understanding what you said. Could you say it again? And then just yep. replay that portion. That's really good. Thank you for sharing that, William. Appreciate okay. it. Colin in the UK, Bill, have you ever tried a double pole double throw relay to also switch the radials uh yeah you can do that uh uh that's a good point uh is that uh, i uh, i have tried that and it, it it works if you use a plastic box you're going to need a double pole double throw relay because you need to also um get some kind of continuity between the shields of the coax but um i don't use that i use i uh, i just ground all the shields and all i care about is switching the center the center conductors of the coax that's that's all i'm worried about in the shielding Okay. Okay. Uh, Chris from uh, Scotland, any measures to take out static buildup? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, uh, the verticals, any vertical will uh, uh, gain static charge because of snow or, or wind and so forth. So you take a, um, you, you, you wind um, some uh, uh, enameled wire around a little PVC tube or you buy a choke if you want. 
and you put it from the center point down to a ground rod, down to a ground rod, so that when it builds up charge, uh, it will uh, it will go through the RF choke. It'll bleed off through the RF choke, but it won't take your signal down to ground. Excellent. Thank you very much. A uh, question from Tom in Bahrain. Due to velocity factor, important all coax must be the same. What coax do you use? Um, I use RG8. Really? Yep. RG8? No kidding. Yep. Do you use yep. U or X or do you care? RG8X. RG8X. Okay. Yep. That's good to know. We're live with William Desjardins, Whiskey One, Zulu Yankee. If you have a question about building phased array vertical antennas, this is your moment because seriously, if you look at the price of a Yagi, for example, and then you price in a tower, and then you price in the crane that has to come lift it up, and then the team, and then the beers you buy, and all that, okay, you still maybe aren't as good as a set of phased vertical arrays. But talk about that, Bill. Yeah, the big advantage of it is that the, the first thing is that it's a low angle radiator to begin with. Um, and you can go to that article that we wrote uh, before the show talks about propagation angles and everything. Yep. Got it but right verticals, now. verticals are killer uh, for DX um, if they have the right conditions around them. They have to be over salt water or basically salt water really uh, uh, is a player. It's a fair playing field for them. They can take out a three element Yagi. A single vertical can be as loud as a three element Yagi because the angle is so low. Um, and, uh, that's a, that's the first thing to remember that that's the most important thing because, uh, angle, the takeoff angle is the most important thing for getting out in DX, yep. uh, rather than forward gain. Yes. And, and quickly in the old days, the old guys used verticals. They call them Marconi's. Everybody used vertical antennas. There were no Yagi's. <laughs> Through right. some horizontal wires. That's right. After World War II, it became the invention of coax, 50 ohm coax, and uh, Yagi antennas, and everybody went into Yagi's. They kind of forgot about the verticals. Mm -hmm. But but the true fact of the matter is, is that when Marconi was doing his tests and everything, he was using a balloon with a vertical. The receive station was a vertical. I think they were even using a beverage on that first test uh, over in, in, I think it was in Scotland. In Scotland, yes. Yeah. Yep. But after World War II, people forgot about verticals. And then if you go back to them and you have the right location, because it really depends upon where you are, for the guys that live near near the ocean or if you want to go portable near the ocean, it'll blow your mind when you start hearing signals coming in at three degrees, two degrees, four degrees of elevation that you cannot hear on a horizontal. Because when you look at the curve, it curves up at the bottom. It loses all that really low angle sensitivity, yeah. whereas vertical is maximized there. That yeah. is maximized. How do you how do you lower the takeoff angle of a vertical? Um, that depends upon the far field. In other words, a, a few kilometers away from whatever vertical you have, that's what you got. You know, and so if you're portable and you go near the ocean, then you can play. You can have a, even in a car. It's fantastic. But the objective is, is that uh, this is a good question because people work on the radial system so that they can get the most efficient radiation out of the vertical, which means I put 100 watts in, I get 100 watts delivered out of it. Mm -hmm. And then you deliver that energy to what's called the far field, which is the uh, the terrain surrounding it for you know a few kilometers, let's say. And that terrain in the soil is what sculpts the pattern. And so if you're near ocean and salt water, you're gonna have a lot of low angles will we'll, uh, we'll, We'll, we'll go there. If you come in up to land on, on top of bad soil, you're going to see all of those low angles getting uh, attenuated for okay. certain complex reasons. Okay. Uh, but you can't do anything about uh, the far field. The only thing you could do is say, I'm going to get as much power as I can out of this vertical into that far field by my radial system. Very good. So the ground radials are important. I'll just add another eight to make you happy, all right? And then I'll tell you, you how should. it goes. Watch what happens. I then will. you got to go to 32. Oh, no. <laughs> 32 is where it's at. It, but, uh, okay, whatever. Right. Thank okay. you. No, 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 I, I agree. I, I, You know what? I don't know. I'm not an expert okay. at this. You're right. I'm sure you're right. It's just I'm kind of thinking cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. There you go. Oh, money? Money? Yes, money. Go As in cable. Aluminum, huh? aluminum fence wire. Yeah. Aluminum electric fence wire. 25 bucks for 1,300 feet. No kidding. Yeah. Go to tractor supply. There you go. That's a great idea. How about that? Get some. And Larry, uh, I think I'll do that. Larry, Larry, if you're adding radials and you, you're measuring the feed point at resonance, the, the impedance at resonance. Yeah. On your, you have a DX commander. Yeah. Okay. Whatever frequency you're on, when the feed point gets around 36 ohms, 38 ohms, you don't have to add anymore. 
Okay. You'll have a, you have a 1.3 to 1 SWR, but at resonance, you'll have the correct impedance for the antenna. It's 100% efficient. Good to know. That's good okay. to know. Thank you very much, Bill. That's great. Live with William Desjardins, Whiskey One Zulu Yankee, talking about phase array verticals plus beverage antenna building. You can put your questions in the comment section. We'll make sure and add them to the show. And I thank you for coming. Uh, Martin from Holland, Papa Echo 9 Tango India Golf. Does the transmit vertical also hear better as well? Absolutely. Uh, the front to back is devastating. It's 30, 35 dB uh, be between the uh, difference between the two directions when you're listening. You're also listening at an extremely low angle if you can get it in the proper uh, terrain. And if you flip the switch, you can completely kill stateside in here, Europe, or throw the switch in here, uh, the stateside rather than Europe if you're on the East Coast. But you're again, you're listening to a lower angle of incoming signals. Uh, the one uh, bad problem about it is that the verticals are very sensitive to um, electrical noise. Mm. So you'll hear static. You'll hear those uh, cheap uh, Chinese consumer devices. Will <laughs> yes, become yes, yes, yes. Because all, all of that noise is vertically polarized. Yeah. So the electrical E field and the, the verticals love that. So a great addition to a pair of phase verticals as a transmit antenna is a beverage. So you get the best of both worlds. Yes, yes. And folks, if you have questions about beverage antennas, this is the guy to ask. Because if you if you heard the beginning of the show, the call was to, you know, Southeast Australia from Rhode Island. Not easy to listen to or hear, but he's using a beverage to hear him. So if you have a beverage question, this is a guy to ask it of. So thank you, Martin, very, very much. William Myers from the state of Wisconsin, Kilo Alpha 8 Golf India Mike. Mr. Desjardins, I may have missed it, but where do I find the plans for the relay box? Um, they are on my QRZ.com page if you scroll way down way, way down into the early postings. Um, there's a handwritten um, uh, diagram for that. There I'll have it up on sub, it'll be on Substack too, w1zysubstack.com in a, in a little bit. Uh, that'll be up there as well. Yeah, talk about that. You've got a really nice web presence where you talk about not only building phased arrays, but also verticals and other kinds of antennas. Talk, what, what is the website? Um, I just put it up. It's uh, w1zy.substack.com. It's a subscription sort of like newsletter that everyone's using. And I'm taking all of my material from QRZ and a lot of other writings, and I'm putting them into article form uh, and then posting them up uh, uh, periodically, and people are subscribing. In fact, that's the the, uh, the gentleman that just uh, uh, wrote in. Is that uh, G-I-M? Is he in Wisconsin? Yes. Yeah, he just subscribed this morning to the uh to uh, to the Substack, so I thank him for that as well. That's pretty cool, William. Yep. You'll love his you'll love his you'll love his work. He's fun. He's really special. Uh, uh, Chris in Scotland. My wife is watching this on a large television. Well, William, you are now a rock star, sir. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> thank you, wife. Thank you. Gunter in Germany, DK five O N V. Fun question. Oh. As we have no salt water sources here in Germany, can use some buckets filling them up with regular fresh water and using Epsom salt? Does that work around the, the radiator field, the, the ground radio field, I mean? Um, some people have done that. I've heard it. I don't know. I wouldn't advise it. Um, I don't think you can really change the near field uh, that much. And you can, if you're, at, if you're in that position, you just lay down more radios. You get up to about 32, and after that point, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it's not worth any more than 32. You just, want to, you just want to complete that circuit back to the transmitter. You want the energy coming off the vertical to the ground wires, catch all of it, take it back to the transmitter, and complete that local circuit. And then you, and then you get maximum uh, emission to deliver to the far field, which is, does all the sculpting. That's where the antennas uh, pattern is formed not very, by the very, red. very good very good thank you We're live with william desjardins whiskey one zulu yankee from the state of rhode island put your questions in the comment section please we've got a few minutes left for them we've got a great question from colin in the uk bill can you give us an overview on how a beverage works we're talking wave antennas now all right uh, beverages are very long. Well, um, the maximum is two wavelength. It's a receiving antenna. It's very low to the ground, maybe four feet, five feet, up to maybe eight or nine feet. It is not a resonant antenna. Uh, it's called a traveling wave antenna. Yes. And the way it works is that when a signal's coming in, a DX signal is coming in from a far away, it's coming in at a low angle. Again, we talk about elevation angles all the time. And when it comes in uh, into your backyard, the lower part of the wave, as it comes near the ground, starts traveling below the speed of light. 
but the upper part of it, 10, 15, 20, 30 feet above it, is still going at the speed of light. So it tilts forward. The, the bottom part will tilt forward. And when it tilts forward like that, um, for certain reasons, it'll, it'll create a small little weird horizontal um, field that, okay. the beverage, that will grow up along the beverage wire. Uh, which is which constitutes a vertical field. In other words, um, you'll be able to hear the signal even though it's polarized horizontally as it comes in and it builds up uh, energy as it goes down the beverage wire into the um, transformer back to the um, back to the um, receiver. Shaft. Yeah. yeah. So, now, so, and a 470 ohm resistor at the end of it. So it okay, makes we'll it. That in a What's we'll that? that in a we'll get to that in a sec. Okay. Okay. So that's that's if the uh, energy is coming in off the end of the beverage that you that you have it pointed at. Now, uh, other energy is coming in from the other side as well. You can't control it. Uh, energy signals coming in on the other side of the beverage that you don't want off the rear end of the beverage. They'll build up in the wire as well, going the opposite direction. And when they get to the end of the beverage wire, unless they're afforded a nice one to one match to ground, they're going to bounce off the wire and come back down the beverage and go into your receiver as well. So if you don't want a bi-directional beverage, which some people do, if you're in the middle of the country running a net, you might want two-way, two-directivity beverage, low noise. Sure. You put, you put a terminating resistor off the end so that all of the stuff coming in from the raw direction gets dropped off and it doesn't bounce back to your feed point. There you go. That's a really, you know, I love that because that's a very easy to understand explanation. And, and people you. that have land, man, you could build four directions and just use a switch easy, just no. easy. No, you don't need four directions. Uh, uh, you can make a beverage that you can flip the directivity on it. You use two wires. So you can have a two wire reversible beverage. <clears throat> okay. But, but if you want to say, for example, let's say you want to work oh, for, for me, you work Europe easy. Okay. But for me, I don't because I live a long ways and I've got to go over the pole. If I want to work Europe, I've got to go a little bit northeast to go over the pole, right? And if I want to go to the United States, for the most part, I'm a little bit southwest. That's how I have to pull. So if I've got just going two directions, how am I here in, let's say, if I'm going north-south, how do I hear east-west then out of that? Oh, I don't mean that. I mean that, like, in other words, if you want to listen to the north on a beverage and then listen to the south on a beverage— yeah. Uh, some people, I've seen people do this. Um, they say, well, I got to put a beverage to the north. I got to run another one to the south. Oh, see, yeah, yeah. We're talking different things. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I'm talking about if you want to work in four directions, you can send one east, west, north, south, or northeast, whatever, and have a switch <laughs> and listen off those beverages and have excellent directivity on receive. It's such a huge difference, but you got to have land for it. That's the thing. Yeah. Not Well, you know, uh, you can, and I have, I've done this. You, the, a beverage is directive because it's long. You get up to about two wavelengths, and then after that, it's no good because of the resistance of the wire, essentially. Uh, okay. Something coming in even further, it's gonna, it's not going to work past two wavelengths. Okay. But you can put a really short beverage up. How short? Now, 70 feet on 40 meters. There you go. So 70 okay. feet on 40. Now, how about dexing some short wave? Because a lot of short wave goes up to the 19-meter band, which is around 15 megahertz. How you know we get shorter then, right? Oh yeah, you, you can you can bring it into about maybe a, you can go down to a, a, I've done it down to a half wavelength, and and the advantage of that is that in addition to the directivity that everybody talks about with the beverage, and then the, everybody immediately thinks it's got to be sixteen hundred feet long. Yeah, or, yeah. Or, you know, <laughs> the other thing about a beverage is that it's it's a traveling wave antenna, and it cuts down static. Yes, even if it's not ten thousand feet long, it won't be as directive. But it will give you an antenna to switch to where your noise level is going to be way down compared to a horizontal antenna and certainly a vertical. Yeah. Because it's a traveling wave antenna and it's not sensitive to um, uh, the local electrical noises. Okay. It'll only listen. Uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's a horizontal. It's a different type of antenna, but it will not pick up local uh, static as yes. a vertical or, or a uh, dipole will. Yeah. So in your case, you got like you're in a 50 by 70 foot lot. Yeah. And if one of your directions goes, you know, one of your 70 foot directions goes like to some area that you want to listen to, you could put up a little beverage or maybe a two wire beverage or start with a one wire one. Don't even terminate it. 
and then, uh, on the on the on the far end on the on the feed end, you got to put a you know ground rod in to match it and all that. But you should try it out just to see like what is my noise level like. Yeah, you're listening to a signal and go. Let me listen to that on a beverage. Yeah, it, it never hurts. It never hurts to put up loops, beverages, whatever. Yeah, um, to 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 have an antenna to turn to. Yeah, uh, see, I, I wondered about that. If you can go down to a half wave, say for example, if I'm on forty, you know, and I, I'm cutting it at thirty-two and a half feet long, right? And it's better than nothing. So if I put it down, you know, above the ground, but not on the ground, but you know, I terminate with a four seventy ohm. Do I still use a four hundred seventy ohm resistor, or do I use maybe a different grade resistor there? It depends. If you're getting into the, you're getting into the details of it. Yeah. Uh, it depends upon um, the soil conditions and how high the beverage is above the ground. Mm -hmm. um, but the ballpark is 450. But I, I can get into the details if you want me to. But the, the the terminating resistor will change as a function of the height of the beverage above ground. Not not necessarily how long it is, but the height of it. Great. This is great. Isn't this great? Isn't this a wonderful visit with William? Gosh, yeah. I, I'm so glad you're here. Whiskey One Zulu Yankee. From Rhode Island, uh, so Chris in Scotland. I meant to add that my wife has no choice but to watch it on the big screen. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> he also. I hope we answered this. He says, and this is an interesting question because you know, Chris. We some of us. Uh, sorry, uh, William. We all, we don't all live in areas that have lots of room, right? And you talked about beverages that it, it's going to be a week long project. This is something you have to take your time with. But on beverage antennas, that's different. You can put a beverage up and, and even have a go kit if you want to go portable with it, right? So is is there any, what Chris asks, is there any way of using a shortened beverage for small lots? So let's say, for example, 50 by 50, okay? You got a backyard that's maybe 20 by 30, okay? Can you put a beverage in that area to work reliably and, and decently? Absolutely. You're going to hear low noise reception. You may not get that directivity uh, that, that the longer one will get, but you will get uh, that low noise. Uh, you'll get a, you'll get a, um, you get a low, a low noise floor. Good. Good. Okay. So if somebody wanted to build a go kit, for example, cause you and I talked about this on email already. Okay. A go kit, you got a beverage. You want to go four directions with a switch. Um, how long do you think on the wire? You got, say you got 14 gauge or you're using the, 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 um, um, wire you mentioned, the aluminum wire, right? So how long should we go? 70 feet? This yeah, stuff. there you go. There you go. The fence wire. Right here. There you go. <laughs> so the fence wire, are you looking at 70 feet and terminating with a 450 or 470 ohm resistor in each direction? Not in each direction. Uh, you, um, uh, in other words, you want to have, you're, you're talking about, you put up two beverages to listen in two different directions. They're both single wire beverages, one going one way and the one going the opposite. Is that what you're talking about? Talking about if you wanted to put up a full 360, so you're going to go north, south, east, west, okay? Okay. So um, let's say you wanted to do that. Or let's say, because most people work in portable, they want to point a certain direction. So let's say to just go to east, west, to make it simple. Okay. Um, I would put up a two, I would get a two wire beverage. I would make a 70 or a hundred foot long, however you have a uh, two wire beverage. You can use uh, ribbon, ribbon wire, whatever they call it. Yep. I use this, uh, this aluminum wire with spacers, but, uh, and um, you make a two wire beverage uh, about maybe 70 feet or however long it is. The only thing that you got to really uh, uh, watch out for is your ground, your relationship to the ground. Yeah. I was going to ask that okay. about the height. The height is about uh, six to eight feet. Okay. Maybe nine feet. Okay. Um, I've I've taken I've made a beverage. I had a two wire one, and I brought it down and experimented on a contest weekend. I brought it down to four feet above the ground, and it acted like it was dead. I couldn't hear anything. Really? And I kept going up and up and up and up higher on this rig. This rigging I made it was three hundred foot long, and uh, I found the optimum height for it given this ground condition to get the right match and everything like that. But the, the height, uh, the height would be about six. I see people put them in at four. It could be the ground, but for me, it's like six to eight, uh, maybe even nine is what I've what I've seen. That's optimal. The, okay. The ground conditions are very important. Uh, the simple thing is, uh, don't use the ground rods that are eight foot. You take a uh, piece of copper tubing and have it cut in half, two five foot uh, pieces of copper tubing, uh, jam it into the ground. But then you put out radials. You put out about four or five or six um, short radials, 15 feet, 10 feet, whatever, um, so that there's a uh, so that the ground um, it uh, it stabilizes the ground condition. It makes it a good RF ground. 
hmm. uh, over a wide frequency range, as opposed to just a, uh, a ground rod stuck in the ground for like a service entrance, electrical mm -hmm. service entrance. That's right. a different type of ground. Okay. You want a radio with a capacitive coupling to the ground. Uh, to allow those signals to have a really good path down to ground and lower the impedance of the uh, ground connection. And this is on a beverage? On a beverage. Both really? ends. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. We're learning. We're learning. It'll never work. If you just put a ground rod in, it's going to be disappointing. You've got to put the radials on the on the ground rods. How long should the radials be? Five feet, eight feet, ten feet, whatever you can you, you know, run it under the undergrowth or whatever. They don't have to be, it's not like you're doing a, a vertical. It's just to capacitively couple to the ground okay. uh, so that so that the radio signal has more than just a tube stuck in the ground. It sees a huge capacitor, and it, and it really likes that. It, it uh, makes a better path for it. Okay. Rod Claire from Salem, Oregon. Kilo Alpha 7 Lima Papa. I think it was, right? Kilo 7 Lima Alpha Papa. There we go. i got to remember these by memory, and there's so many now I'm losing my mind. So Larry and I are not near the ocean in western Oregon. What direction would we want our beverage running? Uh, Rod, it just depends what, what area you want to hear, really. Um, and a lot of it depends on your soil, right? I mean, not your soil, but your yard. If you can build one, build it any direction you want, but at least you'll hear better that way. So is that, is that what you would answer? I don't know. I guess I'm putting words in your mouth. Sorry about that. Go ahead. It, it, it's pretty close. I, it, it, at least you're, you're experiencing a different type of antenna. Again, this is a non-resonant traveling wave antenna. It's an old-fashioned antenna. They use it for the first transatlantic testing and so forth. Absolutely. So you're dialing your radio into another, uh, I wouldn't call it laws of physics, but it's a, it's a completely different um, situation compared to a resonant antenna, whether it's vertical or horizontal. Mm -hmm. And um, you, you, nobody knows how it's going to work in your location. So put it up and just listen to it and study it yeah. and see what, see what the band sound like through that little uh, that little contraption. And, they, and important to know, signal the noise. <laughs> it's low yeah, very low exactly so you're gonna you're gonna be playing with the preamps a little bit on frequencies no. you would normally not well no if no. you're if you're if your signal comes down what i'm saying is to hear it better you're gonna want to bring it up a little bit right nope the, uh, the modern rigs have so much sensitivity you, you don't you don't need a preamp really oh yeah Interesting. Even I, well, hold on. Now, I, now, hold on. I got to challenge you on one thing here because okay. I've had a Wellbrook loop, okay, Meg loop, and okay. it was a meter off the ground, and I definitely needed my my preamp on eighty and forty to bring the signal up. But again, yeah, I'm on a mag Meg loop. Yeah, that's a magnetic loop. The yeah. magnetic loop is looking at the magnetic component of electromagnetic yes. radiation, and yes. you, you you would need that for that. Yeah. There we go. Okay. I was going to say, wait a minute. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Glenn Stevenson, Australia. Thanks very much for joining Larry on the show, William. I have learned a lot listening to you, mate. Glenn, that's great. That's Good. what we want to hear. That's awesome. what we want to hear. Um, I think this is, uh, we almost got everything. Oh, Colin in the UK, Bill, have you tried a loop on the ground receive antenna before? No, I've heard. Uh, I, I, is that the bog? Are you talking about the beverage on the ground? Yes, the, yes. Thing? Or yeah, there's loop on ground, like the the loop on ground antennas. I haven't. No, I've I've looked at a YouTube video of one, and it looks like it's so low, like the uh, the signal is so so low oh. that I just figured raise it up eight feet. Yeah, you know, that's what I thought in my mind when I heard it. Yeah, but. yeah, and it really is. Uh, you know, a lot of folks who are on shorter or smaller lots, okay. And oh. you don't maybe have the room for a beverage. What would you recommend for them? You know, do you oh, able to I, hear I, better? I need to reverse myself on that. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't do it, but uh, if if that's what you want to try, try it. In other words, if that's all you got, then 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 do it. Uh, try a beverage on the ground. Try a loop on the ground. Whatever you see people doing, and whatever the newest thing is, uh, give it a shot and see. Even how it mag works. loops too. Mag loops will bring. You know, you're not going to have a loud signal, but you're going to have better signal to noise ratio with that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Live with William D. Jardines, Whiskey One Zulu Yankee, all the way from the beautiful state of Rhode Island. Although cold today, although it's cold. Final questions, please put them in the comment section, and we will we will get them set up. William, do you think that Beverage and sorry, the phased verticals are something that can be done portably. For example, you got you got a kit, right? And you 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 got your your you got your antenna radials themselves, all your ground radials. You put them in a bag, or whatever. You have a go kit. Is it possible to do that? Um, yeah, I, I think it is, but I think it's more trouble. Uh, you don't get much benefit out of it. Uh, with the phase verticals, what you're seeing is you get 3 dB forward gain. Your signal uh, will increase 3 dB off of, off of a single vertical if you're using phase verticals. 
but but behind you in the opposite direction it's 30 db 35 db uh, even higher in the rear quarter so the big advantage of the face vertical and what you hear when guys flip them on the air isn't like the forward gain you're listening to the rejection off the back so if you go from a pair of face verticals to just a single vertical and i've done that you'll see the signal come down at about 3 db okay so so it it it, it, uh, it it's not worth it but, but again, the, the main thing is a low takeoff angle. Okay, no, I, we may be talking about two different things. What I'm saying is, can people put phase array verticals in a remote kit, like a go kit? You go out to the sea for the weekend, right? And you've got your, you've got your antenna, you've got your radials, you've got everything pre-done. Is it something that you can take on the road with you is what I'm asking? Um, yeah, the problem with that is the ground system. So the way to get around that is to put up two elevated radials, let's say, if you're going to go near the ocean or something. The, the thing that comes to my mind is a ground system. You don't want to put uh, 30 radials around both of them. They need the radials to work. Uh, and if you don't have that, then the old standby is to put up uh, two elevated radials. Uh, or you, yeah, you need two elevated radials per vertical to get that to work. Okay. Portably. Good to know. That's good to know. For folks, folks that might want to work portable and do that, that's, that's, there you go. Thank you very much. I appreciate that answer. Uh, Jim, who's one of the best CW ops in the world, he seriously is. Whiskey 6, Julie, India, Mike out of Walnut Creek says, thank you, Bill. I see a new antenna project in my future. Good. <laughs> that's really good. good. It really is. That's what we want to be able to do is to help you out on Saturdays. And I was so excited for for this opportunity because we don't have enough really good content regarding phased array vertical antennas out there. William, this, this is not a new technology. This goes way back to the dawn of radio, right? And what is, why is it you think that it's kind of fallen off in terms of the knowledge to really get the most, I mean, AM broadcasters use this for goodness sakes. Hams could do the same thing. Why do you think it kind of has fallen out of favor? Uh, again, I think that after World War II, uh, coax was invented, and uh, Yagi, the Yagis came out. Yep. Then, as, and there was a lot of military equipment being flooded out onto the ham radio market because the hams are kind of like military associated. And everybody got into Yagis. Everybody got into the suburbs and said, "I'm going to put up a tower and put a, a TA33 in the backyard and rotate it." And uh, they forgot about verticals. Um, verticals need some space for the radials. Um, they're dependent upon the ground conditions in the far field. So it's not the best thing for like a desert or if you're over rocks or something. It's not, uh, uh, it, it'd be better to use a horizontal antenna. But I think that people basically uh, got into the uh, commercial, it, horizontal antennas became commercialized and they, they're selling towers, guy wires, rotators. Uh, this whole industry came up around them mm -hmm. and, um, and people forgot about the verticals. You can't make any money off of a vertical commercially. It's just, yeah. like, you know, it'd be fire or a piece of tube. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, and, and you have a story too. I want to make sure this gets in the show because it's really important. You have a friend in Georgia that has a tower, a Yagi and everything else. And you just had your phased verticals, right? And he yeah. said, I, I kind of want to have a little challenge with the ear mate. Let's, let's see who's getting the signal up better. Talk to us about that. Will you? Uh, when I was running the uh, phased verticals from the assault march in Succotash in 2018 and 19 compliments of captain Jack's restaurant, uh, none of I know all the big gun guys, and none of them except for two uh, would show up on the same frequency with me against those verticals because they they knew what they knew what the deal was. Except my friend John W two VP, I've known him since I was a kid. He came up on frequency, and he said, "I want to get a comparative report with you uh, with this guy. We're working working a guy uh, in Australia, Long Path. I was, and I told him uh, we don't want to do this, uh, but he insisted." <laughs> He said, I just won the AWRL uh, contest for the best 10, uh, the top 10 antenna systems in the country. I'm going to be on the cover of QST. I said, John, you don't want to do this. But he did it anyway. I have it recorded. It's up on uh, my audio archive. And I'm, I'm on freesound.org. Uh, it's up there. Mm -hmm. And uh, But basically, uh, the guy in Australia was like uh, really polite and, and so forth. But he said, yeah, well, John, you're like 5 over 9 and Bill's like 20 dB over. With phase and, verticals. Uh, uh, compared to this thing, it was a rotatable tower. It's a monstrous thing. It's like it's uh, it's on the front cover of QSG. I think I gave you a photograph of it. Yep, yep. But, I got a uh, picture of your your field there by the sea. I got that one up on the screen uh, right now, so people could see what beat uh, the big yep. tower with the giant Yagi on it right there. Yep. That's it. And all the hardware. And then afterwards, John was laughing, saying, "Your your dollar per dB ratio is a lot lower than mine." <laughs> 
Do you think? <laughs> Do you think? Wow. I uh, want to welcome Todd from State of Kentucky, Kilo Yankee for Tango Golf. Well, we're almost done here, William. He said, uh, so what is the ideal height for a beverage antenna? Sorry, I'm late. Can't wait to replay and take notes. It depends upon the soil conditions around you. It depends upon uh, the primitivity and the soil conditions, your conductivity. But I found myself... Uh, uh, six to uh, nine feet, uh, and also, of course, if you're in the woods, you got to watch out for the deer and so forth. But I did try lowering at a 300 foot beverage, and I did lower it systematically down to about three feet, four feet. And when I got down to that level, it was like dead in, in my in my location. So I uh, I say six to eight, six to nine feet is, okay. is what I found in my experience. Okay, and then from there, the antenna goes up, right? So you've got to have the antenna go up from six to nine feet. At, at elevation. So you're talking about the bottom of the antenna goes there, but then the antenna goes higher, right? He's talking about beverages, right? No, he's talking about, he's talking about uh, phase verts. I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, uh, oh, no, 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 no. He is talking beverage. I'm sorry. I'm, I went back to the question. He is beverage. Sorry. My okay. fault. Okay. You got it. Sorry. You just Larry's, Larry's been doing this too many days, Doug. Got it. I want to welcome William from uh, Heber City, Utah. Kilo, Kilo 7, Alpha Alpha Golf. Welcome, William. Good to see you. William Myers in um, in uh, Wisconsin, one of your new subscribers there. Kilo Alpha 8, Golf and Mike. He said, if I want to start with one antenna project, do you recommend the phased vertical or beverage to start with? I find both interesting. I would, William, thank you for the subscrib- subscribing. Um, I would start with a beverage. Definitely. You got to uh, hear first. Yeah. Uh, Bill, I would go beverage, single wire beverage, and then I would turn it into a double wire beverage. Personally, I would, I did that and I would start with a single wire and get, get the grounds working nicely and tuning it properly. And then I would go to a double wire beverage so you could flip the directivity on it. Yeah. It just, you got to hear first when you hear it just makes such a difference. Mm. I've been and doing you can use it on lots of different bands. This is my 50th year doing DX and shortwave. And I can tell you, RX is so important. Gosh, it's so there's a reason there's an RX antenna on lots of radios out there. Tom in Bahrain, maybe I missed it. How much power do you typically run, William? Uh, a kilowatt. Output. Okay, there you go. There you go. And it's all homemade, does it all himself. But he also was very good at saying, okay, you know, Take a good week to do this. If you're going to build the phase verticals, take your time, get everything measured, make sure that your resonance is good. Make sure that you've got a, a 36 ohm impedance, not 50, it's a 36. And, you know, take your time with the project. If you build the beverage, that's, that's not going to take you so long to do that. You can do that and start having some fun today if you want to, you know, quarter wave, uh, actually more than that, probably about a half wave at least, right? Yep. And then, and then if you have more land, go out further, but the, 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 the routine is to um, tweak it, put up the rudimentary antenna so that when the, when the sun goes down, you can go back inside and start listening to it and then go out again when you get some more time to tweak it and to build it out even more, adjust it, tweak it and so forth. Yeah. Understand. Good. Uh, Todd, final comment, Keely and for Tango Golf. Does William have a book or website? Uh, yes, uh, I have uh, a website that I just put up. It's uh, w1zy.substack.com. And then also on QRZ, my page, I turned it into a blog a number of years ago, and it's pretty popular. There's about 190,000 people uh, on it, and it's got a lot of technical stuff on it. It's a Congratulations. Blog. It's a That's great. I, I got I to put this here from Tom. He asks about the diameter at the base of the verticals. What, what I use for the, for, for the conductor? Yeah, I think he's I think he's asking about the diameter of the vertical length. Actually, sorry, the radial length at the bottom. I think is what he's talking about. Oh, on forty meter, it'll be a half wavelength. On, uh, they're they're quarter wave radials, so when they're going out in opposite directions, that's about a half wavelength. So it makes a half wavelength circle uh, on the ground of space. Okay, and Tom, I hope I got that question right. If I didn't, please. You know, correct me here because I want to make sure you get it right. We have been live with William Desjardins, Whiskey One Zulu Yankee from the beautiful state of Rhode Island. We're going to play a great sign off from television history from Rhode Island for him today. William, anything you want to finish the show with to talk to the folks about? Uh, yeah, is that there, there's a, a discussion, of course, about uh, what do you do with radio systems in limited spaces? If you don't have the space for that 70 foot circle, what can you do about it? But that, that'll be for. Uh, I think I talk about that on Substack, but but that's another uh, main point that people probably want to talk about at some point. 
There we go. Okay. And Kevin joined us from the state of Iowa. Kilo Zero. Kilo Lima Bravo. This is another fantastic show. Thanks for sharing, William. Great info. I have two silos next to each other. I see phased arrays, <laughs> phased arrays silos in my future. Oh, my gosh. Phased arrays silos. Phased silos. Can you imagine? He's got it. He's not kidding. My gosh. Yeah. Tom is asking aluminum poles for the, I think, the diameter at the base of the vertical. He says aluminum poles. Is that correct? Uh yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, I used an uh, inch and a half. Mine ended up being about an inch and a half at the base. I telescoped them. Okay. All right. Uh, Todd from Kentucky. One more question, please. Can you put a beverage antenna on top of a woven wire fence or does it need to be over open ground? Did you say a wooden, a wooden fence? Woven, like W-O-V as in Victor E-N. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, uh, ha -ha. Uh, uh, I, I would try it. I would try to get it above it. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have anything to do with it as far as grounding is concerned. Don't touch it with your ground wires, but yeah, give it a try, but don't, don't connect to it in the ground. Excellent. Excellent. William, thank you so much for joining us today on a Saturday. It's, it's been a treat. This has truly been good. Let's have you come back on. All right, I'm a big fan of your show, Larry, big time. Bless you. Well, you know what? I paid him for that. So, you know, <laughs> checks, checks in the mail, my friend. Folks, we've been live with William Desjardins from the state of Rhode Island. His call sign, Whiskey One Zulu Yankee. I invite you to please take a look at his webpage. I'll have a link to it in the description section, as well as a link to his article on building antennas, what they're all about. I think if you're a new ham, you've got to see this. It's just perfect wonderful until we meet again folks well, i want to tell you first of all we've got a great guest coming next week we'll meet him next week his name is brad humphreys people have asked about learning to work digital modes and wanting to figure out how to do it he's going to talk to us about working fd8 his call sign is alpha echo 4 victor juliet join us next saturday 20 utc and meet brad He's going to teach us how to work digital modes. If you'd like to email the show, have a question, a suggestion, or a comment. By the way, got my WRTH finally. Yes. <laughs> it's funny. Please email me here at cqmradiolive at gmail.com. To meet again, here's a sign up from Providence, Rhode Island, from back in the day when TVs actually turned the light off. Till we meet again. God bless you. And thanks for watching Ham Radio Live. Goodbye, everybody. WJAR-TV now comes to the close of another day's telecasting. WJAR-TV is owned and operated by Outlet Communications Incorporated and operates on Channel 10 with a maximum power of 316,000 watts visual and 49,000 watts oral. is authorized by the Federal Communications Commission in Washington, D.C. Our studios are located at Broadcast House on Dorrance Street in downtown Providence, Rhode Island. And our dual tower transmitter is located in Rehoboth, Massachusetts. This is Jim Mendy speaking on behalf of the entire staff and management and bidding you a good night and good morning.